The red button. Mm -hmm. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me again, Paul Alcohol. Hey, hey, Paul. I want to say this is not an AA meeting. You know, it's just a talk, mostly about the principles of AA, but it's not an AA meeting. So. Uh, let me see. Maybe I'll start in the forward in the book. I think it's, I don't know which one it is, but they say a statement in there. To me, that's really important. It goes like this. It says, we are well, 100 men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. So a lot of times I hear people share and they say it's a hopeless state of mind and body. But the book says it's seemingly, and that definition of that word is that it appears to be true or false to you. Yeah, so actually, the, the depth or the severity of the disease is based really on you. Yeah, so it's a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. So it can appear to be true to you, and then it can appear not to be true to you, based on your condition, not its condition. Yeah, so when you get into recovery, it doesn't appear to be true anymore that it's a hopeless state of mind and body because you're outgrowing it. Yeah? You haven't drank in a few weeks, you're feeling a little better, you got some new pants and maybe a little ghetto blaster and one DVD or something, yeah? And things are looking up, yeah? So the whole point is, they talk about it in the book that this is a disease of thought and perception. So the perception would be, it's a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. So if that was your perception, it makes sense to get loaded. Doesn't it? If it's a hopeless state of mind and body, meaning it has no possibility of change, it makes a whole lot of sense to get loaded because I'd like to avoid that hopeless state of mind and body, even if it's only for five minutes. I want to get loaded so I can forget how hopeless of a state of mind and body I seem to be in. But it's the beautiful news is that it's seemingly hopeless. And so there is a hope, there is a possibility, but I found that I can't produce the possibility. I'm overmatched, basically, when it comes to alcoholism. Yeah. One of the biggest reasons for me is that alcoholism, like most parasites, yeah, if you look at parasites in nature, most parasites in nature constantly override the primal instinct of any creature which is self-preservation. They override it. So I'll give you an example. My, the first one I ever heard about was this insane mushroom called cordyceps. Yeah, it's a species, and there's a lot of different versions. So this cordycep, like most creatures here, have a, the main, main drive is to procreate or reproduce. Yeah, and so you thinking you're having a hard time meeting someone on Match.com? <laughs> These parasites find themselves in an unbelievable position you know, in other words, they may be in, in the body of a rat or a mouse, and they, can, they have to get to the stomach of a cat to reproduce. Jesus Christ, there's no Uber they can call. There's no, you know, you know what I mean? They can't book a flight. They can't leave the host. They don't have any arms or legs. So they have to have an incredible strategy to convince the host to go where they want to go. Yeah, which is like, instead of Match.com, it would be Cat.com. They want to meet up with a cat, and that, that's their last date. <laughs> the rat. <laughs> but the rat doesn't know that, you know, because you don't know it because you're taking over. And it's just like alcoholism to me. And I like to use the word parasite or foreign installment because if the root of the problem really is you're identified as it, it's really cool when you can see it as something foreign to you, yeah? Something outside of you. In other words, a difference between you and it. But what happens with alcoholism, like these parasites, is the parasite, these cordyceps, they're a spore on a mushroom. And the spore, it's like a really, 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 like a very, very dangerous situation because they gotta depend on wind or an animal walking by and catching one of them with the hopes of reproducing. So these things took this idea, what they do is they land on an ant, yeah? And they burrow into the ant's head, and they jack into the ant's brain, and they tell the ant, hey, I want to go to a dank, dark place underneath like a freaking tree or something, yes? And so now the ant 
go, it's its form of transportation, drives it to where it wants to go, it kills the ant, and then it grows as a mushroom right out of its head. Yeah. Now that seems amazing, but there are many strains of cordyceps mushrooms, and each one targets a different insect. There's only one kind that targets ants, another kind targets locusts, another kind grasshoppers, another kind whatever, yeah? So they jack in, they, they burrow into the host, and then they jack into their little brain, and they start directing the host to go where the parasite wants to go. It sounds like alcoholism, doesn't it? Really, literally, I'm sure here in the, in the society you're in is very familiar where I'm from, San Francisco, and if you took like a survey of all the thousands of people in recovery here and all the different ethnicities and educational level and financial level and physical health level, and you'd be amazed how many of us go to the same three parking spaces, which is institutions right here, jails and death. Yeah? Tons of different hosts, but they all seem to end up at the same parking spaces because there's only one driver yeah, all of us were driven by alcoholism or addiction, and all of us tend to go to the similar place, at least internally. Yeah, that should be, that should I don't know. To me, that makes me curious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because when I came in AA, I had a thick shell of terminal uniqueness. Yeah, I sat in those rooms and I was listening to people, and I didn't I think anyone felt like I did or thought like I did or did the heinous things or the terrible things that I did. But after you list, listen for a few months, people share their thoughts and their feelings and their actions in life. And I could only come to two conclusions. How did they get my thoughts or they're not my thoughts? And that was one of the first, the first ring of hell lifted and moved. So now there was only six rings instead of seven. You know, The one ring just disappeared and there was space there. Because I saw now, I saw a lot of the thoughts going on in my head as alcoholic thoughts. And that gave me distance, yeah? I wasn't calling them mine, I was naming them alcoholic. And as soon as I gave them that name, there was space between me and them. And that's where the pause lies. If you know that term in AA, yeah? a pause where you're, the parasite, in a sense, is taking you to the same decision point, fuck it, yeah? And it's going to tell you, like, go get loaded or rob that bank or leave the rehab when you have a no pot to piss and nowhere to go, yeah? Don't even have bus fare, but I'm going to show them, and you run out, and you're fucking out there with fucking nothing. <laughs> Especially if it's January or December, you don't even have a jacket on, yeah? I was in a program for two years in San Francisco, Delancey Street, and I saw a lot of people on the floor who were cooking up a resentment towards the program, and it took maybe some of them for weeks, some of them for hours, and then suddenly they, there was a glass door, and they bolted out, let's say at 11 o'clock, and that's, they thought and thought and thought, and it didn't come to them, but then something, as soon as they left the facility, something came to them. I'm fucked. But they were, they were out of the facility. They had to go through the whole process again, knocking on the door, and people would ignore them. And then if they allow them in, they got to sit on a bench maybe for 12 hours to ask if they can come back in again. This is what it does. The thought system leads you to a point of fuck it. You have no defense against it, you, definitely because you're relying on the mental state and there's no mental defense against the first ring, and then you're off and running, and it uses us for transportation, doesn't it? And in this case, it doesn't want to die. You think you're going to die early? No way, man. Alcoholics freaking are like cockroaches. They just keep on living. They have limps, abscesses, they've had amputations, no teeth, but they're still drinking and hanging out on the street. Because the host, the parasite only has that one host. It can't jump. It can't jump from what it actually can in a way because it's hit all of us. For me, it's like a giant mushroom you don't see, and it sent millions of spores out that landed on us burrowed into our thought system, and now it starts with directing us what to do. And the problem resides in the mind, as they say. So there's another one they've discovered called Toxo. It's, that's its nickname. It's a long name. And it's in about 30% of people's brains. Yeah? But it's like, uh, it's latent. It's laying there. It's not activated, yes? 
but there's a lot of them in rats and mice and other mammals and their prerogatives, they got to get to a cat's belly. So they jack into the rat's head and they tell the rat, when you see a cat, run right at that cat. That's what it does. They have a video. It's great. There's four cats hanging around this wall in the middle of the day, just hanging out. Then this big rat runs right up to them, basically goes, eat me, like a sign. And three of them are just flipped out. The other one starts sniffing around, slash whacking it. And the guy says, yeah, come on, hurry up. <laughs> I got to get in there. And then it gets in there and it reproduces. This is what happens with us, don't you think? So what would happen if a parasite had entered you somehow? And when it entered you, it has an incredible strategy because it knows damn well if you recognized it, you'd get rid of it. Yeah, it's like a big bug. If a big bug flew into this place right now, I'd knock it off. If it f flew in 30 times, I'd knock it off. There's not one time I'd recognize it and call it me. Not once. Yeah. Big freaking bug, big freaking bug, big freaking bug. A year later, big freaking bug. You know, there would be no things, you know, you'd be knocking it off. So this parasite, very hostile, very hostile. It doesn't treat the host well. Alcoholism and addiction, does it? No. So it gets in there and it had to come up with the greatest freaking strategy. And I, this is what I humbly believe because I've lived under this tyranny. I've seen thousands of others that have lived under its tyranny. And its strategy is it convinces the host that it's the host. So now the thoughts it's producing, the feelings it's generating, the actions it's generating, you and I keep calling them ours. That to me is the bondage of self. So it says it beautifully in the book on page 64 in the resentment inventory, I mean the whole inventory, right near when they start with the resentment. It says being convinced, which means to believe with certainty, that self, yes, self is just everywhere in the book they're talking about self. And if you look up the word self, look it up in a dictionary. It usually is followed by a hyphen and then about 160 descriptions, yeah, of self, attributes of self. And about 120 of them, I would say, are negative, and maybe 30 are, are positive. So you're behind the eight ball, unbelievably, <laughs> because there's self-emulation, self-destruction, self-loathing, self-mutilation, self, self and then, oh, self-esteem. All right, one good one. <laughs> Self-love, getting destroyed by self-emulation, self-destruction, self-hatred, all this, yeah? So if you're going to live as after that hyphen, if there is an identification as self, then a lot of your life is going to have those descriptions in it. Self-pity, self-loathing, self-this, self-that. Because they come from the self. Just like the word bondage, the statement in AA, it doesn't say, please relieve me of the bondage to self, because that would actually be, there's self, like the chair, and there's me, and I'm bonded to it, like I'm handcuffed to it, yeah? And so that would be easy. I recognize the chair, and I, I, I don't recognize it as me, just like when I was out there. I did tons of cocaine, but I never became cocaine. Yeah, there was a separation, no matter how much coke, I didn't start, you know, laying in a big bindle and fucking, you know what I mean, close it up at night, you know, only to open it, all the time, see how much was in there. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't ever become coke. That line never was, you know, erased, yeah, the identification with Paul. So, if I was bonded to a self, then I could find a way to get unbonded, yeah? But it doesn't say that in the big book. And his language is very, 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 very specific. It says bondage of self. Just like in old England, you would be like Jim of Kent, let's say. So you come from Kent, yeah? Or, you know, Samuel of Samantha. So Samantha gave birth to you. So you're Samuel of Samantha. So it says bondage of self. So really, the only way there can be bondage is of self. Without self, as the Petri dish, bondage wouldn't grow, yeah? It has to have bondage, self, for bondage to occur. This is the whole point, because we keep thinking the bondage happens first to us, but it's actually the sense of being a someone, Paul, an alcoholic action figure, 
That self is what grows all the other shit. The self-hatred, the self-pity, that's how it grows. So if you could possibly see that you are not self, yeah? It says it beautifully. It says being convinced that self, and self to me is the feeling of a, being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity, a body, yeah? Pure and simple, brain, and the brain is of the body, brain, yeah? So the brain's producing the sense of self, but it's of the body. So being convinced that self manifested in various ways, we know the ways. We could have, we could have a marathon and share about the various ways self has defeated us. It would be like a seven day event. It would continue on and on and on because people would chime in on YouTube and shit and we'd be there for like 365 days in a year because all of us have been fucked. Literally, over and over again, yeah? So when I come into a meeting, I don't identify with who you are. I identify with what's taking you over because the same parasite took me over. And when you share what it was like to live under it, I identify because I've lived under it. That's our common bond right there is the problem. We've all shared in it. One host taking all of us over, yeah? So being convinced that self manifested in various ways. If you're convinced of that, and so you see it, it's beautiful, it has defeated us, yeah? It's very clearly he's making a distinction. The self manifesting all these ways has defeated us. We're the us, yeah? And then there's this, let's say, mental condition or parasite or foreign installment or fucking helmet, whatever. <laughs> we all seem to have the same one on. And in taking that helmet to be us, in taking, in taking that parasite to be us, in taking that far installment to be us, it has the ability to defeat us over and over and over again, manifesting in various ways. Yeah? And actually, it doesn't manifest in that many ways. They're pretty similar. Yeah? One of the statements, institution, jails, and death, that's a manifestation. That's pretty similar. Yes? So... It doesn't have an infinite amount of traits. It's just a parasite. It has a limited amount of traits. And the big book acts basically brought it to light. That's what opened up the possibility of relief. It was discovered. It was seen. Yeah? And they put it to, they put it to paper and pen and started getting together with other people who had been taken over by it. And by sharing about it, we learned something about it. And what we learn about it is not us. Being convinced that self manifested in various ways defeated us. We're not the same. It, it doesn't say, uh, you know, being convinced that us defeated us, manifesting in various ways. No, it says self defeated us. So it says, all right, so you follow logic. Then it says, if, all right, if that's clear, let's look at what? Selfs some of the common manifestations that we all share. Resentment is the first one they look at in the inventory process. So resentment is a manifestation of self. Why the hell do we keep calling it mine? Wouldn't you be pledging, even when you're studying the solution, you're busily pledging allegiance to the problem. You keep calling self's expressions as yours. Self defeated us, manifested in various ways. All right, we're convinced of that. I am convinced I've been fucked, yeah? All right. All right, now we're going to look at some of its, self's, manifestations. Why? So that we can recognize self in our lives and maybe see it, and when you see it, you can't be it, yeah? When you catch the burglar and it ain't you, you're on to something. Because if it isn't you, you can be, see, this is the dilemma, and I've experienced it. About my ninth or 11th year in sobriety, this sort of dawned on me. Actually, it dawned already, and then I read something that verified it, and it was this statement. I read this out of the book, and I saw self as a foreign installment. I saw it as a parasite. And as soon as I saw it as something other than me, suddenly, 
something that was pregnantly available at all times but didn't become obvious and it was this i can be free from it as soon as you see it as other you can be free from it if you keep calling it you you can only dream to be free as it and that ain't gonna work now well let's end with the talk and then you can ask questions yeah you see it's like the, in the book it says self-knowledge avails us nothing why would knowledge avail us nothing Knowledge doesn't avail us nothing, but any knowledge claimed by self is going to avail you nothing. It's not going to lead to freedom from it. It's going to lead to some possibility that it can dream, I can have freedom as the self. Yeah, It's not the case. The freedom here is from. You see something that you are calling you as not you. Yeah, And that's when recovery can stabilize. If not, it's just skillful means every freaking day. That's what happens. So you see it, all right? So you write an inventory, and what happens? You'll see the pattern of what? Of how self defeated us, yeah? You'll see it. You'll see what self takes to be really important by looking at your instinctual agenda. Let's say most of your resentments are about self-esteem. So you maybe you, that points out to you that, as they say in AA, when you come in here, you've gotta be willing to save your ass instead of your face, but when I came in, I thought my face was my ass, yeah? So the image I had was what I was trying to save, not my ass. That's the self. That's the selfie. I'm trying to save the parasite at all costs, and I'm losing my freaking ass. And I actually fight people to be right about its view. You know what I mean? Leave me alone. I have the right to be fucked. Yeah, you do. And it will probably continue. <laughs> Isn't it? Really. You start living for the parasite. Yeah. This is freedom from, not freedom for, not freedom as, not freedom through, not freedom by, but really purely simply freedom from. And after that started dawning me, I saw, as they say in the big book, the problem resides in the mind. It's in the thought system. Mm -hmm. That's where the parasite is jacked in, and it uses thoughts to bring you to what it calls surrender, which is fuck it. That's what it does. Some of us, it has to work weeks building a big case. Some of us are sort of overmatched already. It takes five minutes. You know, you perceive someone's fucking with you. They haven't even thought about you ever, but you're thinking, they're out to get me. They're not, they don't even know your name. Yeah? It's all totally misperception, but you believe it, and it leads you to fuck it. I'm going to show them. I'm leaving that rehab. And then you're fucking out there in the motel, what, a three-day motel or whatever, shooting up or smoking or whatever it is, and you're fucked once again. And now the genie's out of the bottle, and it's hard to get it back in. And it's going to use us for transportation, doesn't it? You go on a run, and if you've been on a run, is it really a run after a few weeks or months? You're limping usually. Like walk. you know? <laughs> Walking, yeah. You've lost one shoe or something, you know? You're limping, <laughs> you're crawling, then you're dragged back to a position that you know really well. The pitiful, incomprehensible demoralization. It happened with me. I was in a program. Like if I, when I go to rehabs and it's a 28 day program, I ask people, what, what's the most important day of the program? And they say, oh, da, da, da. But I say, it's the 29th day. Mm -hmm. It's what you do when you leave. Because when you leave these four walls and ceiling, you're fair game usually. Yeah? It's going to pick us off. So I was in a program two years, 85 to 87, Delancey Street. I'd match it up to this place. And in two years, 85 to F7, never got loaded, never acted out. You know, I followed the, I followed the rules. I graduated with flying colors. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but I thrive in institutional settings. I do. I do really well when people are telling me what to do. So 85 to 87, I leave there. They didn't have AA. And I knew around this 16th, 18th month that there was something I needed that a, this Delancey Street didn't have. I asked all the people that lived there for 30 years, and they didn't know what I was talking about. I knew I, was, I had to leave. Yeah? Now, their idea, they have this huge thing about the greatest success rate, 90% or something. But you've got to read the fine print. You have to live there the rest of your life. 
If you decide to leave Delancey Street, everyone I ever saw that left from vice president down got loaded because I saw them coming into AA. Yeah, but if you stayed there, maybe. So that's what they did with me. They in, they offered me a five year plan. Say we want you to stay for five more years. I said, Nah. I think is there any other options? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like a solution to me. But is there anything else? And they said, Yeah. There's a workout program. If you fulfill these things in four months, you can graduate. And that's what I did. And when I left, I moved into this. It was wild, man. Yes, you know we're the most unsuspecting. You know, it's we get taken over like that. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Two years, I went to college, and they had told me when I was ready to graduate, they said, that period of being Mr. Hyde, though rather long, was over. You're going to be Dr. Jekyll from now on. So I went out into the world as Dr. Jekyll, and I got a place to live. But when I moved in, Mr. Hyde moved in. Yeah, And I got irritable, restless, and discontent. And my head ran in advertising, as it's very good at. And it started telling me what I'd been missing for the last two years of being clean and sober. You know, all the wonderful, you know, junkets with my junkie friends and all the lovely sunsets I saw behind blankets and shit like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Made a whole story. And I bought it and I got into my car and I drove down to a bar. I hadn't been to a bar in two years. I was going to lose the car two nights later, but I didn't know that at the time. I went there, and in Delancey Street, left to my own devices, I had figured out my problem was narcotics, which it was. But I had made a little amendment that I could drink. I didn't run it by anyone in the program, just filed it. And then I graduated, and that idea that I can drink came up that night, and I got in my car and drove to a bar that I used to go to. It was the Rose and Thistle in San Francisco. We used to call it the Nose and Sniffle. And I went in there, and you know, the obsession with self is unbelievable. I'm thinking the bartender has been getting my newsletter, he's not going to serve me. But I go up there, haven't had a drink for two years, and I order my first beer. And it's funny, I learned a very important lesson that night. If I'm not drinking, narcotics is way over there, but if I drink, I'm going to get cop narcotics. That's what happens, yeah. So, drank the first beer, and nothing happened. I had impunity. I ordered a second beer, he brought it to me, I drank half of it, and it, I realized I want more, yeah, which is usually the case. Now more could be alcohol, but there's a lot of mores, and I have a special more I like. So I started looking around the room to see if that guy who used to sell more was still selling more, and he was there. He has like a franchise there, you know. <laughs> he kissed his ass, he sold me some more, and I went out to the car, and I got in, I opened up the more, and I did a line, and it was really like that movie, The Shining, where Jack Nicholson comes through the bathroom door at the end, you know, the here's Johnny, it was just like that. The parasite took me over, you could feel it. I was moved over to the passenger side, and I went on a 10 month run. Yeah, And it was worse than fucking ever, worse. Yeah, And then I had no hope, because I had shot my wad, so to speak, in Delancey Street thinking, all right, this is the turning point. It wasn't the turning point. It was a, like a little rest stop. The parasite was getting stronger every day, and then we went on a long fucking road trip for 10 months, yeah? And it took me to all the golden oldies. <laughs> Jails, hospitals, shit like that. <laughs> so I ended up in a trailer park, washed up in a trailer, with a guy I didn't know, drinking a bottle of Royal Gate vodka. They must have the same vodka, but with like Smirnoff label. You know, they only, they make the same jet fuel and they put different, for different areas of the country. We call it the Royal Gate, and it's a little joke in recovery. It's like, it's the gate you enter at the end, the Royal Gate. <laughs> vodka, it's very cheap vodka. So I'm drinking it with this guy, and suddenly I'm looking at him, he had a big head, a big bulbous nose and varicose veins, and I said to myself, this guy's a bum, you know? And lo and behold, he was looking back at me like I was a bum. And something happened. Something stopped the problem that resides in the mind. For about three or four minutes, nothing was going through. And then a download occurred, very, very quick. And it, beautiful, it didn't get caught in a little horizontal fucking, you know, riptide it went to the innermost. And I really like that statement in the book about the first step, better than the first step in the 12 steps, where it says, 
we admit to, we admit that we're alcoholics. I admitted I was an alcoholic to get a drink all the time. I admitted I was a drug addict to get drugs. But in the book, it says you admit to your innermost self. That, mm -hmm. to me, is the key. And I didn't know where the innermost was, but this download happened, went into that innermost, and it really was like a CNN news flash, just a headline, and the headline is, I'm fucked, basically. And I'd been fucked for quite a while, and a lot of people knew it, but it was escaping my attention, so to speak, yeah? And from that point on, different information downloaded, and it led me to, next day to be at my first AA meeting, March 21st, 1988. I've been sober and clean ever since. And what the magic of it was, Something happened in that trailer park that no human power could initiate. I wanted to stop. I couldn't. My mother wanted me to stop. She couldn't get me to stop. The state wanted me to stop. They couldn't get me to stop. Nothing seemed to be able to get me to stop, but something had stopped it. It took out like that urge. Yeah? And, it was, and ever since, I've never had a thought or a feeling about drugs and alcohol. And it's amazing, you know? The most we can do usually is learn a lot about the thoughts and have skillful means to deal with the thoughts. But could you imagine if the thoughts about a topic that ruined your fucking life were removed and never showed up again? You wouldn't need any skillful means. It's empty. The problem doesn't exist for you anymore. That's a possibility. They talk about it after the 10th step. The, the, act, the possibility is the problem will not exist for you anymore and it can do that for all of us a day at a time where we will not be led by the parasite we'll be led by a power greater than the parasite let's call it the higher power or the course in miracles calls it the holy spirit but something because you're going to be led no matter what something's driving the car you're not yeah either the parasite or the spirit and as jesus says you'll know the tree by its fruits you've already seen the fruits of the parasite you want to keep sitting underneath that tree? And then maybe you're just starting to see the fruits of sobriety. But there's a lot of people here who have a lot of sobriety, and maybe you'll like some of their fruits, so to speak. Yes? <laughs> so that was it. That was the beginning of it, yeah? And then I had spent two years in Delancey Street, and when I left there, I didn't like them, I didn't like their way of conducting themselves or how they treated me, but I had to admit that my life was better with them telling me what to do than it ever did with me telling me what to do. Yeah. So I had the third step already, and all of us in this room have surrendered many times. We surrendered to the cops, we surrendered to drugs, we surrendered to a woman or a guy. We've surrendered. It's not a foreign fucking, you know, thing, yeah? <laughs> but what's going to happen with the surrender it's really the effects of the surrender is what you surrender to. See, if you surrender to the drugs, you're going to get the results of that kind of surrender. If you surrender to this program, the higher power, you're going to get the results of that kind of surrender. It's not the surrender, it's the vehicle it's put in. And AA is a fucking damn good, reliable vehicle. And there's no church, there's no spiritual path that has as many meetings around the world as we do. And charges nothing yes mm -hmm. because we know exactly what we're up against some churches have one meeting a week we have 698 of them a week we know the problem resides in the mind and so the love of AA and the spirit that's in it has grown in this way where there's all these manipulated pauses every day so if your head's starting to cook a big story just go to a meeting that hour, if you pay attention to what's happening, it will be derailed, yes? It will constantly, has constant mechanisms all over the place doing service to derail self-centeredness, the self-will, yeah? That any life based on will not be successful. It derails it, derails it, derails it until you get enough power behind yourself, yeah? So this whole program, for me, the way I entered, entered it and basically live by it is surrender. Totally. The admittance of the second part of the first step that I'm not managerial quality. Yeah. And I found in a beautiful thing that when you're exerting power you don't have, you experience powerlessness, frustration, being fucking pissed off, resentment, because no one's doing what you want them to do. But if you admit your powerlessness, you feel power all day. It's a beautiful way, isn't it? It's totally contrary to the mental way of thinking. 
Like what cocaine dealer has it by giving it away? <laughs> Have you ever met a cocaine dealer that had cocaine by giving it away? No, but in the spiritual world, that's what works. You have it by giving it away. And there's something they say in AA I don't agree with, which is you have to have it to give it away. I believe if you're willing to give it away, you'll have it. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to do service, fucking wisdom will come through you to help that new person. It's not your wisdom. It never will be your wisdom. But you and I are like little hoses are going to be used by that divine water. Mm -hmm. If you're open to be used, you'll get the byproduct of what water does. It keeps it fucking really clean inside and things flow. Yeah, and you start traveling lighter on a stabilized manner. It doesn't promise everything's going to get great, just like the fourth step. A lot of people do the fourth step, and they're thinking, if I do the fourth step, everything's going to be great. No, what happens is you'll be able to accept things as they are, fucking finally. You'll be able to fit yourself around circumstances instead of trying to fit them around you. It changes your attitude and outlook. It's not what you think. It's not going to be, oh, I'm, everyone's going to know how great I am. Probably not. It's the whole thing's based on humility and not anonymity. Yeah? It's a whole different ball game. It's like when I'm surfing. You know, you're in the water, you're catching the waves. Yes? It's really a pisser. And then when, but when the mental state when you're surfing is, it's saying, did anyone see me catch that big wave? Yeah? It's all about fucking you. And that's the illness. Could you imagine today if it was a sunny day and everyone's been enjoying the sunny day? That light has been dispersed and everyone's been able to see, feel warm, everything. If some of that light got concentrated on one thing, it would burn the shit out of you in a second. That's what we're doing. The mind is an incredible, powerful fucking source of light, and we're like a magnifying glass. And when we're taken to be the center of the universe, you're going to be fried out. You tell me, have you ever thought of anyone other than you as much as you thought about yourself? <laughs> I mean, the amount of weight in thought that has been poured over you as a body is fucking unbelievable. Day in and day out. You talk about that? Why do you think the mind is so obsessed with self? It's doing that to reinforce the identification as it. It's keep, it keeps adhering us to the parasite all day. It can't make the bondage, but it looks like it has to us. It appears to be seemingly so. It appears to be seemingly so that I'm a body and a body alone. And that the only recourse I have is to try to get a spiritual condition as the body. But the fact is, the truth is, you're not a body and inherently you are a spiritual condition. That's the beauty. The beauty is you are the spiritual condition. And it says in our book, you know, your daily, my daily, our daily reprieve is contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. Yeah? Now... If you're taking yourself to be a body, you're going to have to maintain a whole fucking lot because all the spirituality you're trying to graft on the body doesn't take. It's like water and oil. But what would happen if you are a spiritual condition? That would be the highest form of maintenance because the spirit is doing is being, yes? It's not doing spirituality like some of us think we do. It's being spirit. That's the maintenance, yeah? The program does not produce a spiritual awakening. It diminishes the mental condition. And then the spirit becomes obvious. That's what happens. You come in the program. Let's say we hit the third step. The third step could have been said like this. You and I turn our will and lives over to the care of higher power. That's it. Yeah? But that would have been based on the idea that it was our life to surrender. And it, we don't have it. It's been taken over by the parasite. So we have to make a decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of the higher power because we can't deliver the life because it's not in our possession. We're taken over. So we have to do the working steps four through nine to loosen that grip on us, yeah? So that that decision will have some power behind it, yeah? You start living the third step after you do four through nine, basically. That's when you know what surrender is. That's when you can be led. Because now the grip, see, we're under the assumption it's your life. It's not your life. It's been taken over. 
It's been taken over. You're occupied, literally. And a very powerful occupation it is. Look at how, look at the percentage of people who stay sober. Very, 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 very low. Now they finally, society seems to have put up the white flag. Now they're just going to shoot for harm reduction, you know? <laughs> just don't burn as many houses as you have, you know? <laughs> Fucking don't kill as many people drunk driving. That's going to be the big win because the parasite's a strong fucking motherfucker. But the thing is, it's like a little dog masquerading as the big dog. If the big dog shows up, the little dog rolls over. And the only thing I've experienced that power respects is a greater power. Mm -hmm. And we're not the greater power in the condition we're in, but the higher power is. And AA is the conduit, AA is the middleman, AA is the conveyor of that power to us through the spirit. Just like the tw second tradition says, a loving God as he may express himself in our group conscience. This is a group conscience, and there's a loving God expressing itself right now. That's the power of this meeting. It's the juice. It's for every one of us. You can soak it in like a sponge. That's the source of juice. You're not. When did you ever keep a commitment when you were out there? I had me, I tell you, my, one of my best friends, well, you don't have best friends really out there, but someone I knew a long time was getting married. And he took me over to the site and the most honest and sincere request he made to me, which is please do not get high at my wedding. Yeah, and I heard it. I felt it, and I said, I, bro, I'm not going to get high. And two hours later, I was shooting up in the bathroom. Mm. I had no power to compete, to, you know, to compete or complete my little commitment. None. None. I was speaking out of the side of my neck, because whatever I said had no power behind it, because something else was driving me. Yes? And the only thing it's going to move over for ain't you, ain't your mother, ain't the state, but that other power. And A8, for me, you can find other ways, but this is the way that was ordained for me. That higher power, for me, comes through AA for 28 years. And you have it by giving it away. Yeah, And our whole program is based on humility. You don't take ownership, because if you do, that thing you take ownership of is going to own you. If you think you're the thinker, the thoughts will be able to own you. If you believe you're the feeler, the feelings will be able to own you. And especially if you think you're the actor, then the actions will own you. And if you don't read the first step and see, it says we were powerless over alcohol, which is that old example of you're dancing with a gorilla, you're going to stop when it wants to stop. Then why the hell do we still have so much shame and guilt for what we thought we did under the influence of drugs and alcohol? The first step has told us right now we were powerless over it. What I've discovered when I made amends was I, was, I would have done anything to you unless you could physically stop me. That was basically it. That was it. Yeah. Where's the, where is the freedom from shame and guilt? Where is that? If you keep thinking you were the doer of that which you were driven to do, where are you going to find peace in that? How are you going to make peace with your past? This is, we're using the bomb that's supposed to be for the whole body, just for your elbow. We're minimizing its effects. If you see the real exact nature of the wrong and also the exact nature of the solution, you'll see a much wider, wider lens. You'll come, maybe come to the point in the third step where it says you and I, Make a decision to turn our will and life over to the care of a higher power of our own understanding. Maybe, just maybe, that will grow into you will turn your will and life over to the care of a higher power of its own understanding, which is incredibly revelatory. Would you, could you imagine, did you ever do this here in San Francisco? Newcomers would write down all the shit they wanted in one year of sobriety, right? And then the, we, you get a year later and you'd be with your sponsor and you'd read it. And you see how much you shortchanged yourself. So much more had been brought through AA into your life. 
It says it so beautifully, you know. God can do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Why not expand what we can't do for ourselves? Surrender the whole kit and caboodle and be led. Yeah. You can always return it. You can fucking walk out and get loaded again and renew your contract to that fucking failed GPS. <laughs> he'll, he'll download maps. He will. When you punch in, hey, I like to go, I like to be happy, joyous, and free. Okay, bum, 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 bum. map comes up. I'm in jail that night. <laughs> when I follow its directions, I go to fucking institution jails and death. Oh, I like to, I like to have a really good time tonight. Oh, hey, bum, 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 bum. I'm in jail again. <laughs> Why would you keep following that instructions? It's failed miserably. It says it in, in AA. He says, why are you in so much fear today? It's a good question to ask ourselves today, right now. Why are we in so much fear today? Is it because self-reliance has failed us? So we've been relying on the parasite to show us the way, and it's showed us its way, and it doesn't jive. It's not leading us to happy, joyous, and freedom. It's leading us to incarceration, being lonely and right about it. Why do you keep subscribing to it? Because when it enters any aspect of your life and you meet it, you call it me. It's like we're identified with the fucking parasite. And we, as they say in AA, self cannot get out of self. When you're identified with the parasite, you're not escaping from the parasite. You're trying to escape from the parasite as the parasite. That's the state and self can't get out of self. Yeah? If you're identified with the self, you can't escape from the self. Every escape from the self will be self-escaping, and that's no escape. This is the beautiful, see the exact nature of the wrong, and then there's a possibility of really stabilized relief. Stabilized relief, like it says on page 84. You'll feel, you know, the problem will not exist for you. You'll be placed in a position of neutrality with no thought or effort on your part. It'll be like you're fucking reborn. Because it's like that, exactly. You're freed. It's like, could you imagine if you were born and someone put some, a 10-foot thing on your shoulder, like a hand, let's say. And your whole life, it's, you know, it's always been there. So your shirts are like fucking got to have a bigger shoulder pad here and stuff and it's like this fucking weight constantly and you have tons of ideas what it is but the best way would you would know it when it was finally lifted when it was lifted you'd know exactly i had like a 10 pound fucking piece of meat on my shoulder yeah you don't know it while it's on there you think all these things are what's your problem but when it's relieved you know it and when it was relieved for me, I saw exactly how extensive and how correct the book is that it's all about that self-centeredness. It's all about if you don't deal with it, it's going to kill you. Slowly. So I, for me, I'm in this tribe. I think this is great fucking news. I remember the day I read this thing. I used to do fourth step workshops in San Francisco. Every week I taught this from this one chapter, how it works. And there it was on page 64, the third paragraph, being convinced that self. And suddenly I saw it as something other than me when I said it in my head. Yeah. First time, distinctly different, like fuck. And then I then it made total sense. Self is what has defeated us. So where the us? And then the important thing was, what are the exact nature of how it does it? It's identification as the parasite. And if you don't believe so, then why are you saying a resentment is your resentment when it's a manifestation of self? Why are you saying the fears that are being experienced are your fears when it's a manifestation of self? You're looking at the wrong source. You're blaming you, and you've been taken over. It's like beautiful. You go to jail. It doesn't. You get run over by the car. It doesn't. Yeah. It can't drink. It doesn't have a mouth. It's got an incredible job because it's known. It's had you before, and there's tons of evidence you should never fucking ever touch a drink or a drug. 
It's got to override that, which is monumental. It has to convince you against all evidence that it's a good idea to put alcohol in your body again. And look at how easy it, it succeeds. How could it possibly do that if it was Stanley trying to convince you because you would see it as other than you, you'd have a lot of immunity to what the fucking guy Stanley was saying to you. But because it's you seemingly talking to you, all that immunity is gone. It's just, it's just running us. It's like, fuck. If I'm swear, if you see it as other, it's the beginning of stabilized relief. If you keep calling you, you've got to be vigilant and have to work constantly to keep it at bay. And you know what? AA isn't like when you're in your first year. You become like a free-range alcoholic. You really become freed from the disease, literally, a day at a time. Yeah? It's not going to be like it is right now if you just come off the street. It isn't. Your idea of AA is very, very limited. You cannot believe what it'll do with you. Because you know what? It's the most unbelievable recycling. Because I remember the last five years I was out there, I could not find any value in anything I fucking did for five years. And if, I, if it was a big pile, I would have thrown it, thrown it in an incinerator, with me included. And I came in AA and all that shit was recycled and put to use and became valuable in me helping other alcoholics. Mm -hmm. Fucking unbelievable. Can you imagine surrendering to that? That which can make fucking gold out of shit, where you make shit out of gold? <laughs> Literally. Haven't you seen the evidence? Who has just come in here? You haven't drank maybe a week or two. Something's doing for you what you can't do for yourself. So, yeah. Any questions tonight? Don't want to beat a dead horse. You know? it's, just a, it's an invitation, really. You have the basic... To me, this idea is like an illuminating quality. Yeah? We already have the path of illumination, which is AA. But this, this will illuminate the path. Because sincerely, you are light. You are not a body. You are spirit. As St. Francis says, what's looking is what you're looking for. That what is looking is looking out of all of us right now, and it's spirit. And that's what we're truly looking for. Yeah. So, there's no questions? Well, oh, yes. It sounds a little... Uh, I, I love what you're, what you're saying, and um, I, I, deep down inside, I agree with it. But it sounds like some kind of possession of some sort. You know what I mean? Over our, over our spirits, you know what I mean? I, I, the I, parasite. Yeah, yeah. Well, it has been, eh? No, yeah, definitely, you know what I mean? And um, how would you battle this parasite? Yeah, I, you, I, I wouldn't. Look at, look at it as <laughs> other than yourself. I wouldn't. I did it for years. You don't win. I surrendered to AA. Right. And I followed AA way. And AA brought about a freedom from it. I couldn't do it. And especially, I couldn't sustain it. Maybe I could stop drinking, but I can't stay stopped. Situations change, and what I make it through one day, I'd be overmatched the next day. I need a way of life because I'm seemingly living a life, and AA is that way of life. Someone else may find another one, but this is the one that was tailor made for me. You found it easier to look at it this way? Oh, totally. Most definitely. You have to see it as other, or you can't be free from it. If you keep calling it you, all your plans about freedom is as that. That's like the statement, self can't get out of self. You can't escape self as a self. Yeah? I love the whole foreign entity thing, you know, the whole parasite idea. I honestly do, because it gives a lot more hope. It's yes. A, it's, a, it's a separating from it. Yes. It doesn't exactly. have to be me for the rest of my life. No, it never was, it never actually. Was, yeah. No. No, no, no. It's a very comforting feel. Thank you. Yes, me too. It's relief. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. This parasite that you're uh, speaking of, it could be uh, called universal hypnotism. And uh, we, as alcoholics, uh, 
happen to be vulnerable to that uh, universal hypnotism. And uh, I, uh, I believe it has no power at all. Other than we, what we give it, yes. Exactly, exactly. Yes, it doesn't. It doesn't have a life. Exactly. It uses ours, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, um... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like a parasite. It lives off. Right. It doesn't have a life. It uses yours. Yeah? But it has to convince you to constantly keep giving it, and the best way it's found is you're identified as it. I, I sure. kind of link it up with self-deception. That's come up with, uh, for me lately. Uh, I read it in, in uh, some of our literature, and uh, the whole idea of self-deception yes. uh, has been one that's... Uh, it's insidious. And cunning and baffling. Yeah, all exactly. That. Yes, yes, so that sure. self-deception. Uh, and now, where does it come from? How about, it could be universal hypnotism also, it, it, you know, out in the, uh, uh, the ether. Um, but, um, so how how does one not become vulnerable to that uh, uh, hypnotism, universal hypnotism, suggestion? You had mentioned something about <coughs> kind of suggestion. It'll suggest things to oh, us. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And that if we accept that suggestion, then we're back into it. Yes. Well, I would start with the we. I'm sorry? The we is the first stop step. You, you're overmatched. So you're not going to deal with it on your own. Mm -hmm. So you join us. And with us, what we, what I can't do myself, we can do together. So we, AA is such a beautiful system because there are no doctors. It's just patient helping patient. And the beautiful thing is I need to, sh to carry the message and you need to hear it. And you need to carry the message and I need to hear it. It's mm -hmm. very symbiotic, yes? So the we is the first, in a sense, is the first shelter. Mm -hmm. Yes, you come into the we, and a program like this is a demonstration or an extension of the we, and so it'll keep you on the straight and narrow for a few weeks. And then that opens a possibility of getting a little more strength, and maybe you'll stay sober this time six months. And then some people, I find a really beautiful thing is the year is really important. And my humble suggestion is if you get the right habits in place the first year, that'll be the best, that'll be, that will be the basis of the rest of your sobriety. Because a habit is an action without a thought. And so if the problem resides in the mind, you do not want the problem to have a lot of say about the solution. Mm -hmm. So habits are actions without thought. So I don't, I'm not sitting around going, should I go to a meeting? It's just which one. Yeah, I'm in the habit of going to meetings. I'm in the habit of saying hello to newcomers. I'm in the habit, yes? And that's, that's the best insurance policy at all, of all, to me. Hold on, let me get this guy next and back in. So I would say the we, in a sense, if you want to, is to admit you're overmatched, you know? Admit you're overwhelmed. You can't pull it together. You're defeated. Yes, those are helpful, in my view. The we turns into the eye, basically, the eye of your being. The, the eye of spirit, yes, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and then look at the beauty, the love that's in AA. Knowing our predicament, how many meetings are there every day, everywhere in the world? There is no social structure that's more extensive than AA. I've been all around the world. There's meetings fucking everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. It's a mind-boggling how much support we have. And then the main point is because one of the best basic prescription for alcoholism is service. Because you'll get an experience of being out of the parasite's influence. And then you start feeling differently. You feel, let's say, bigger, right? 
if and then something happens you realize you're available and when you're available you sense the presence of your real nature not the fucking mental presence of the parasite which we want to get loaded i don't want to be alone with that fucking thing yeah yeah i've seen it i've seen it i've worked with lots of people i've seen people look at that they even their facial structure changes when they get taken over mm -hmm. you know someone and they've been sober a year and then they go out they look like a whole fucking different person their eyes are changed and the thing there's you can see the driver behind the windshield and it ain't what you called them mm -hmm. and look at yourselves look at what happens when you're taken over you're apt to do almost anything It's a very, very, very ferocious fucking thing. And it wants to feed off of you. It does. Like you, this man said, it has no power of its own. It has to convince a power source to willingly open the gates so it can fucking feed. And how, what better way to keep the gates open than to call itself you? <laughs> I mean, it's got carte blanche. Every second of the day it enters your life. Yes, yes. Would you be able to accept and love that parasite? For sure. Because it's not me. It's yours. Yes, exactly. Then, it's then like what, the story what of... what power does it have? Well, the thing is, it's like the old snake story. You know, the lady f saves a snake and then he t puts her in the shoebox and gets a little... cuts a little piece off your flannel shirt, makes a little comforter for it, pillow, and gets a little eye drop and feeds it, and it comes back to health, and then she's walking with it like a pal, and then the snake bites her. And she looks at Mr. Snake, why did you do that? Oh, I've been this nice to you. And she goes on this whole low, long thing, and he says, hey, I'm a snake. What the fuck do you expect? <laughs> You're not gonna change a parasite, that's for sure, it's a parasite. Yeah, it's not going to become your friend. Oh, come on, come out with me bowling. <laughs> no, no, you have to keep it in a kennel. You, know what I mean? you need to have a defense against the first drink. <laughs> I'm serious, it's available, really. One second. The solution is really humbly available right where you are. Right now, at all times, with no requirement necessary other than ones we believe, yeah? The solution is right where this problem seems to be. You are it, yeah? You are what you're looking for. Not as you're constructed or presented by the parasite, but as spirit. You are exactly what you're looking for, yeah? That's why, that's, see, if you see AA and you're in AA, you know, you do the steps, then the steps do you, yeah? And then you become the steps, yes? This, you're, not, you're not practicing the principles, that's your view. Just like you don't, it's not like gra experiences of gratitude, you have an attitude of gratitude. It seeps in to the basic outlook of the action figure, yeah? The whole basic format gets rearranged. And it's sort of like, to me, the real thing is, is to stay on the operating table, don't get up and don't play doctor. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Oh, I want the no, no. Just this is a fucking really beautiful surgeon. They know it's seen many of us. It will extract the parasite, and you'll be going, no, not me, not me, and it's not you. <laughs> we'll cut it out, and then you get up, you start traveling, you're not going to jail every fucking four weeks. And no, oh, I, I don't. Hey, I don't have an urge to drink. I've never felt like this for years. Yeah, maybe you meet a girl, and it's, you know, it's not like, you know, you're not up on stalking charges in a few weeks. <laughs> so, right? And things start going well. Yeah, who knows? But you'll see. But you got to give it a little freaking time, and this parasite's going to constantly try to convince you, yeah, to listen. Does, haven't you had it where the head's trying to convince you? Who's it talking to up there? Yeah, exactly. What, if the parasite was you, it would just fucking parasite all day. It has to convince you to comply. It's like you got the keys, it's like a teenager 
just on the fucking father all day. And I have the cards, and I have the card, and I, oh, fuck it, here's the keys. That's like the parasite. It says on you all day, oh, fuck it, take it. <laughs> oh, I wrecked the car, and you're going to jail. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Because the parasite never goes to jail. You take the rap all the time. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You're gonna use it in court. You're gonna use it in court. Oh, Your Honor, it was the parasite. The parasite did it. Oh, parasite your ass, motherfucker. You're going to jail. <laughs> I swear it wasn't me. They all say that. But really, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, I don't think it's gonna they haven't set a president yet. yet. One day maybe. And it would be more honest than what's happening now. You know, I go to this jail, San Quentin, and my sponsor used to go. Big jail out in California. And he meets a lot of people there that killed someone in a blackout and they're in jail for the rest of life and they can't even remember the event that now has set them up to be in jail the rest of life. They can't they were in a blackout. They don't even remember pulling the trigger or why they fucking did it. That's the extent that can, that's what happens. And then you're left with the, with the holding the bag. Whatever, you know. See, see, we say in recovery in San Francisco, hey, if you're ready, no one can say anything wrong. If you're not ready, no one can say anything right. It's always based on us, really. You have to have the diagnosis. I hope you have, if I was a new, if I had a prayer uh, to offer a newcomer, I would say, please pray to be convinced. Mm -hmm. Fucking get over with this thing. You cannot have a drink a day at a time. You can, but the same shit's going to fucking happen. We could write the script. You know what I mean? We all think we're so unique. Any one of us here could just write the next six months if you pick up. You know? Then maybe the names of the places will be different, but they'll, they'll be very similar places. It's like painful to see because really, this you have to diagnose yourself. You really do. And whatever it takes, I'm a real believer that uh, it's a disservice to save some people from their bottom. The only way they're going to get convinced is to get their ass fucking kicked. And hopefully, they'll be done before they're literally done, which means that dying. Hopefully, they'll be done before they're done so they can have a life. But who knows, you know? All you can do is offer this, you know, offer the possibility, offer the suggestions and the support. And, you know, they take it, they do, and if they don't, they don't. You know? Yes. Uh, I had a similar experience as far as going to a prison, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> they're usually <laughs> similar. Well, I had a <laughs> I'm in prison. <laughs> I had a couple yeah. overnighters myself, but uh, I mean, I I went to visit, uh, you know, the system to bring AA meetings to them. Yeah, and I just started this a couple weeks ago, and. This had come to me before. I'm, just, I'm pulling up to this place, and uh, I see deer out on the lawn. And then I see squirrels all around, and you know, it's kind of, it's not in the city, it's not in the country, it's kind of suburbia. And then, of course, all around there's all this barbed wire and all these, you know, these buildings, and you're going in there, and you have that feeling of I'm going into a horrible place. And people are, are locked up. They can't go out, or you know, they get a little bit of freedom, but they're, you know, pretty much in there, confined. But these animals, they they don't care. They go right up to the fences and the gates, and 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 they don't have a bit of judgment about these people in there. No, I guess not. I haven't asked them, but <laughs> they don't look like it anyway. Yeah, but, but the point is, I have to watch myself because when I go in there, if I'm full of that uh, fear, 
that I'm going into these horrible people. <laughs> the animals don't have any fear. They go right up to the gates. They go right up to where they live. The birds build beautiful little nests in the windows right next to where these people are. But me, if I'm not careful and I judge by fear or anxiety, then I do these people no good at all. But if I can see their true identity, go beyond the labels that has been put on them as prisoners, as horrible people, as people that have committed horrible crimes. If I can look through that and see their true identity, I've been given freedom and so have they. Yeah. Well, to see what I do with that is I admit I can't do all of that and then something does it for me. See, my whole basis of living is I'm overwhelmed. These are nice ideals to have, but I probably won't have them, but something does have them through me. Mm. And I just get out of the way. I do much better being led than But we're leading. the manifestation of it. Well, yes, and I'd rather turn it to that which is manifesting instead of to the manifested. Yes? <laughs> I like to be led. It works better for me. It really has over the years. That was my solution. I hear a lot of people share in recovery, and it gets into self-managing again. You know, all right, now I'm ready. I'm going to get it together. I just stay in the immense. I can't get it together. I really can't. I'm overwhelmed here completely. Yeah, I am. I mean, shit. You know, each pants has two legs. That just throws me off the edge. You know? I'm willing to put one leg on, but two legs is pushing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, I, I'm really, I like the idea of admittance that you're overwhelmed. It's fine. Here, it's safe. Yeah. And if you admit you're overwhelmed, then there's some source of power that will appear. If you have, keep have, running on your own power. You know. Have you ever heard of the statement, I and my father are one? Yes, I have heard of that. It's yeah. non-dualism. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> well, there's a transition. There, there's a transition right there. Yes. I'm not saying these things to oppose you, what you're saying. So oh, I know. I know. Please, do, please don't uh, take. No, that no, position. I'm in agreement with. Please it. don't take that position. You know when you said but. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no. Please don't take that position. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm not here to uh, be con contrary to what your beliefs are and. Uh, I'm here as an observer and uh, hopefully to share and like we do at meetings and and, um, and I'm, I'm grateful that you're here and I'm grateful to hear what you're saying um, and the only reason I'm sharing is that I'm um, why is it <laughs> I was asking that myself. Why is it? I don't know why. I don't know why. It's one of those mysteries. As the parents say. Let me get this guy here, right? Two. Yes. I just wanted to thank you for coming out here. Um, one thing you asked, that you said that clicked for me is that, you know, I've been thinking about it. As long as I'm open and honest when I go to meetings, that those meetings will help derail my thoughts until I have enough power to. to yeah. yeah. Was, you know, and I've never, I've never, I've been coming around a few times. I'm not a first time wearer by any means, but I've never, ever gone to a meeting and felt worse afterwards. Yes, me neither. Yes, I know. It's awesome, isn't it? I mean, really, if you could, if you had a choice what to do. Seven days a week, I'd be in jail at least twice those days. But going to meetings and shit just just keeps turning a better, you know, turning out a better product. Really, if I surrender, this becomes a better product for me and others. If I want to become a better product, it doesn't work out. But if I surrender, yeah, I become a better product. See, it's beautiful. All I need to do is do the steps, and the step produces. It's not like A, B, C, it's A, B, J, yeah? The steps do for me what I can't do for myself, this program. That power through the steps. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah? I'm, you know, if some of the times, if you're gonna try to face something head on, 
it's too distorted. So if you just do the steps, it gets dealt with, yeah? Mm. It's like when you first came in and you were bitching, I don't have a place to stay, I don't have any money, and the person would listen to you very patiently and they said, well, go to a meeting. And you go, what? Wait a minute, didn't you hear me? I don't have a fucking place to stay and I need to get food. Go to a meeting. And it would make no, why would that? But it works, doesn't it? You do? Yeah. And that's, I, this is for 28 years. It's, and you know what? It's like my mother. When my mother, she was, she ended up in her own apartment at the end, right? Not at the end, but near the end. And she was in a wheelchair. And sometimes she would fall, like knock out or something. And she couldn't get to the food. So it was very fearful her. And she couldn't, no one was home. This, there was no cell phones then, yeah? And stuff like that. And she lived under it. And she started having a lot of fear. So we put her in a senior citizen home. Yeah, and so we basically she was surrendered over to their care, and their care was they, they she got a breakfast at the same time every day, lunch the same time, and because of the evidence that fear left, yeah, mm -hmm. because it wasn't she had new evidence like something was taking care of her. Yeah, it's sort of like a rose bush, let's say two rose bushes, a rose bush, and this rose bush is in a very small pot, it has lousy soil. It's getting no sun and it's not getting watered. It's not blooming much, yeah? It's just leaves. And it has self-centeredness, so it's, bitch it's thinking it's the most terrible rose bush, you know? And it sees these other roses blooming and it can't bloom. What's wrong with me and this and that? And then someone comes, doesn't attack the rose bush, just takes it out, puts it in a bigger pot with better soil, waters it, puts it in a place of light, and it's blooming, yeah? Yeah. Mm. The rose bush hasn't been touched. It's mm -hmm. the same rose bush, but put in a different element, mm -hmm. an environment. That's what AA does. Yeah? It removes us out of the pot of mentalness, the parasite little Petri dish, and it puts us into something that we thrive in. We, 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 we draw nutrition, mm -hmm. and then that nutrition is given, and then we have more of it by giving it away. Yeah? And we live a different way. And then that rose bush that never bloomed is blooming now. Did it suddenly become a bloomer? No, it had the potential, but it couldn't fulfill the potential because something, there was elements that were in the way. It wasn't being fed, yes? Because it was being fed on. Yeah, the parasite is busily feeding on us and therefore we're not getting fed and drugs do not feed us. They, there's more dissatisfaction. I used to shoot coke. Yeah, and the first shot you'd enjoy it for about ten minutes. Then the next shot would be eight minutes between, and then five minutes between. It would just keep going faster, faster, faster. It didn't bring a longer. Oh, I never hit a point where, oh, cocaine's done it for me. Finally, <laughs> I'm, totally, I'm totally satiated. Come have all my coke. It's done it. I am satisfied. I'm content. Yes, thank you. It's fucked. And I walk out, thank you, Needle, thank you. Yeah, never. Has it ever happened? Have you ever been brought to satiation and satisfaction through addiction? No. Never. It's like a fucking a whip driving a horse. Yeah? This is different. If you felt content and satisfied, you'd be more willing to give of yourself instead of constantly fucking trying to take. You'd have something to give. If you're empty, it makes sense just to take, take, take and try to fill it up. But all that filling up doesn't go anywhere. You surrender and you're willing to give it away and then you get filled up. It doesn't go. The parasite has inserted a logic in us that makes no sense to what we are, but makes a lot of sense to it. Yeah. And we're taking its logic, its agenda as our agenda. And I don't know about you, have you ever seen it get to a point where I'd be out with people and we'd look pretty good in the beginning, you know? <laughs> After about four days, we'd be in an apartment and everyone be in their own little corner and we were all shooting coke. And then the coke would run out and then one of us would suddenly look on the ground and then get on all fours and start looking around the rug at imaginary coke ores, you know, like this. Like it found, you'd find lint and you'd try, oh, is this coke and everything like that? And then the next person would see you, they'd get on the floor and it would like be like ponderosas. You'd have your little, hey, get away! This is my section. And you'd be looking for imaginary cocaine. 
<laughs> Yet four nights ago, you thought you were fucking slick, cool, hip, and there you are, fuck all fours, just like, ah. <laughs> <You're> just, ah. <laughs> it's like if you could have been on the ceiling, ah, like with those demons in the movies. <laughs> it's like you're fucking taking over. Your Catholicism's gone. Your morals are gone. Have you ever seen? Have you seen people a smoke crack? They will do fucking anything a second later to get another hit. That's not them. That's that thing inside. It's waiting. You give it what it wants, and it. I swear, I've always been killed many times smoking freebase with people. They all turn on you. <laughs> oh, if you have it, they're fucking. They followed me in the car. And it's like, <laughs> give me that coke. Oh, man, see it. Hasn't it felt? Doesn't it feel like a possession? Something has moved in. It's not out of there. It's latent. It's sort of like in pause. But then it jumps to attention, starts working your head, and then leads you to go to where it wants you to go for it. So hey, that's it eh, for tonight. I hope you come back tomorrow night. Hey, there's some books back there. How much are the shirts? 20. But I have all men's shirts, but we forgot them somewhere. What? 20. Books are 15. And if you don't have any money, you can take a book. Turn it off. Thank you so much. Yeah.